Paul, I remember so vividly the first time we met some 10 years ago when uh, I was wrestling with these concepts of uh, a theistic universe, multi-universe, how do you deal with fine-tuning? And your famous uh, statement uh, embedded within a lot of technicality was a pox on both of their houses. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> in, in which you meant that each one were bringing into a discussion of this universe things from outside the universe, yes. either a god from theism or a multiverse bringing in pre-existing laws of quantum quantum physics. So and a lot uh, of universes that and a lot of see. universes that uh, you needed to so, generate this this I one universe. Have an unseen god or all these unseen universes oh. and. Uh, Probably, mathematically, in some sense, they're uh, equivalent. <laughs> okay, so, so tell me what that means, that mathematically equivalent to having a, an unseen God coming in to create the universe, or unseen multiple universes come in to, to, to solve the problem of the, of the apparent purpose or meaning or fine-tuning of this universe, because I would dare say that the vast number of your colleagues in physics uh, would agree with you on the former in terms of the, <laughs> the, the, the God, but be horrified to hear you talk about the latter. Right. Well, well here's a challenge to some bright graduate student out there. Uh, the, uh, when you get into these discussions about, uh, as John Wheeler put it, how come existence, uh, then uh, we're squabbling over my theory, your theory, uh, you know, which one is better. And uh, a good theory is one that accounts for a lot of things with a minimal number of assumptions. It's called Occam's razor. I think everyone's familiar with that. Well, you can quantify Occam's razor. There's a branch of mathematics mm -hmm. called algorithmic information theory, and it basically uh, tells you how complex is your explanation. If your explanation is more complex than the thing you're trying to explain, mm -hmm. you haven't achieved mm -hmm. very much. So what science is trying to do is to uh, bring about algorithmic compressions, that is, the, to explain more and more in terms of less and less. And so if you're saying God did it or there's a multiverse, uh, you can actually ask the question in a quantitative sense, um, uh, how algorithmically complex is one explanation versus the other? Now, this is going to depend on exactly what model of God you've got, and there are many different ones out there. Um, but I suspect that you could actually, in some formal mathematical sense, uh, uh, say that um, the traditional, say, God of the uh, uh, Judeo-Christian uh, Islamic religions is probably uh, equally as complex as th the standard sort of multiverse of the type that you get. Um, the, the claim in, in theos uh, theism, of course, is that the God is the simplest object. I'm not sure what that means. Right, right. Um, <laughs> and, I, and I don't think uh, that the type of God, gods that mostly get discussed, are simple. Uh, in, in the algorithmic sense. So I think both of these explanations are actually really uh, e equally complex. But somebody needs to, that's a hypothesis, okay. somebody uh, needs to go and do, do the sums. That's sums. a great one. Uh, it needs to be someone who's uh, interested in theology uh, <laughs> and in uh, mathematical foundations and algorithmic complexity <laughs> theory and cosmology. Right, I haven't a... found this person. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> well, I, we, I wouldn't spend a lot of time looking. Uh, so, all right, let, let, let's let, let's go with your conjecture and assume that they they come out with your conclusion that both are complex and therefore unlikely to have just happened. Uh, I think you need an alternative, don't you? Uh, right, you need a, a better way, a, a better explanation. And now. Uh, when we've had these conversations, we've danced around all these different things. We've got, you know, the universe. Uh, we've got the state of the universe. We've got the laws. We've got mathematical relationships, um, and and these are all subtle issues. We uh, tend to think of the the laws of physics as definite mathematical relationships. Um, but what is this thing called mathematics? Where does it come from? Is it out there somehow, or is it a, a human construct uh, cre creation? Um, uh, there are different opinions about it. Now, a truly unified theory of existence would have to fold um, the, the universe, uh, mathematics, uh, laws, and observers and observations. They would all have to be part of a, a unitary theory. They would all have to somehow e explain each other. Um, and, and this is not the mode of explanation that's normally adopted. You either say, oh, the laws are just there, they sort of come from nowhere, 
uh, and they're wonderful, precise mathematical relationships, but we, we won't inquire as to where the mathematics comes from or why those laws, we just take it as given. Uh, I think we, we have to try to understand how mathematics comes to exist, uh, how the laws come to exist, uh, how, why they are mathematical relationships and what observers are and what the world is as part of a, of a unitary package. Um, I can see the outlines of such a sort of self-consistent uh, system. Uh, and again, I'm a great fan of John Wheeler. He said some crazy things, he said some wonderful things, but he wanted, when he said, how come existence? He wanted something that um, didn't assume uh, prior immutable laws uh, and the way he put it was uh, cast in tablets of stone from everlasting to everlasting they just sort of handed to you uh, and they made a universe and, and governed it he didn't want that he wanted the laws and the universe to uh, somehow explain each other or come into existence together in a self-consistent exp explanatory loop mm. and you would have to put observers into that and you would have to put mathematics into that i don't mm. think mathematics is something you just say was well, just there and mother nature plunders the great warehouse of mathematics <laughs> and pulls out a few choice bits and pieces yeah. to describe these various laws. We have to somehow explain how all of this hangs together. So your and argument is that, that the all of these, these elements are, 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 are co-temporaneously necessary. You, it's not one uh, 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 yields the other and some are derivative, that well, each of the right. elements that you have have to be all uh, foundational, yes, working see, together. Yeah, it's in meetings like this, you see these uh, uh, slides with um, uh, like the great chain of being. You see something at the bottom and there, there, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And it's usually, you know, mathematics, laws of physics, right. uh, universe, um, life, yeah. mind, or yeah. something like yeah, that. Right. Uh, I want to fold everything together. I think uh, we, we don't we don't want to have to just say there's something sitting at the bottom of this great chain of being that just exists by magic. So, so you, you have mathematics, you have laws of physics, you have something like mind or observers or consciousness or yes, something yes. on an equal level with yes, those other yes, two? Yes, yes. Uh, and, and, well, and, and the matter and stuff of the universe, oh, the state yeah, and yeah, the... Yeah. Uh, but the, the laws universe. can... Maybe right. the, that would be a, a derivative from the laws, though. Well, I... Because some claim that you can get a uh, universe from nothing uh, based on the right. laws of physics. That, that's, that's right. So you could say that that was just a secondary... Uh, so, and uh, others would say that you can, the mathematics can come first and that's what generates the laws, right, but... Right, uh, uh, but, but, but you see, uh, almost everybody else would want to put something at the bottom of this explanatory chain. Yes, And they yes. walk away. Yes, they, yes. So it's like the Tower of Turtles, uh, and the way I express it is that they want a levitating super turtle uh, that holds itself up uh, right. uh, of some, out of some sort of necessity, uh, or they don't inquire how it uh, manages to levitate, and then everything... <laughs> Sits on to, on top of that, right? But 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 you have several turtles that are holding hands at the bottom. Right, right. Well, you see, and again, to quote John Wheeler, I mean, maybe this is mostly his ideas. That no tower of turtles, he used to say, that was, uh, uh -huh. and, uh, and uh, mutability. He wanted everything to be mutable, nothing to be cast in tablets of stone. <laughs> <laughs>